welcome to day two of Lobster Roll 2019. We are here live on Twitch TV from Wilmington, Massachusetts. I'm Rosetta Stone. And I'm the Gag. We are very excited to come to you today. We're second game of the day. We're going to see Dublin Roller Derby versus Sacramento Roller Derby. Both these teams played twice yesterday. This is their first game today. Dublin Roller Derby was victorious uh, against, I believe it was Naptown yesterday. Unfortunately, lost to home team Boston Massacre, which, I mean, the crowd was on Boston's side. What can you do? Oh, that was an exciting game regardless. It was a nice back and forth action. It was very intense. It was a thrilling game. Sacramento coming into today with two losses behind them. Unfortunately, they fell to Boston. They also fell to Naptown, who seemed unstoppable yesterday. And in fact, still seem unstoppable because they did beat Boston this morning. Absolutely, but you gotta give it to Sacramento. This is a great place to learn at these tournaments, especially when you get the chance to play with teams from across the pond, such as Dublin, who've done such a fantastic job over the years, even ended up in their own Continental Cup last year. Absolutely, Kek, and I don't think these teams would have had the opportunity to play in normal season without a tournament like this because they are geographically so far apart. So I wanna come to you with our rosters. I'm gonna start out with Sacramento Roller Derby's Capital Mall Stars. They are in white this morning. We have 0618 Pink Freud, 1006 Nail Her Swift, 108 Namaslay, 124 Crystal, 1415 Bird Dog, 1492 Conquistadorable, 17 Rhodes Warrior, 1985 Con Artist, 451 Shock and Auburn, 501 Darthy Vader, 58 Blushy Lushy, 606 Ariola Twister, 618 Pippi Long Stomping, 94 Talls, and 970 Narnar Jinx. And it is my honor, as always, to introduce to you skating in the blue with white trim, and that is a Dublin Roller Derby. Number 123, Maria Von Slap. Number 16, Gemerald. Number 169, Brutally Lowcock. Number 17, Dirty Needs Louise. Number 23, Green Hole Cooney. Number 3, Voldemort. Number 47, AK. Number 490, Malibu Stacy. Number 575, Pippa. Number 74, Stabba. Number 8, Changletta. Number 800, Thea. Number 83, Dash and Trudy Snow. Number 90, Lana Payne. And number 5, Maniha. All right, I'm also going to come to you with our officials today. Uh, our non skating officials are Surly Temple, Gluten Freedom, Pussy Panzerfaust, Queen Victoria, Julius Seizia. Ziggy Scardust, Riff Ref, Derry Hare, and Marilyn Manson. And on our skating official side, we have Don Scorleone, Strong Female Character, Razor, Reverend Riot, Ridiculix, Recordian, Wicked Pizza, and Intigel. Our broadcast today is being run by New England Roller Derby Report. They're making it possible for us to be live on Twitch. New England Roller Derby Report would like to thank their production sponsor, Sociopath, S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H. Sociopath is a skater-run business offering custom sewn-to-order legwear for teams and individuals. Size-inclusive activewear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armbands and helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. Team discounts are available. Please see sociopath.ca for more details. I think I need more customizable uh, uh, <laughs> gear for my for my announcing over here. What you don't know at home is how much customized gear he already <laughs> has. <laughs> you, you're you're one to speak. You have a glowing skirt of the universe. It's true. My skirt lights up, and it's a shame you can't all see it. But <laughs> uh, you're here for the action, not our fashion statements. So. And and uh, one thing different from yesterday is. Of course, here in America, we had daylight savings time, and it didn't save anything. It just stole <laughs> more sleep from us. But that means I've been lied to again. <laughs> but that means now in Dublin, instead of being five, it's about four p.m. from our standard for them to watch this bout here. And then was it then Sacramento? It's about uh, nine a.m. Yeah, uh, noon is nine o'clock in the morning, so it's not too early, but it's gonna feel like eight o'clock. So it's a little early for Sunday. Um, I would like to give a shout out to everyone watching and chatting on Twitch TV slash WFTDA. 
I saw one name I recognize, Calamity Wren. She is a skater er, and an announcer in Northern California. So, hi, Wren. Thanks for, thanks for chatting with us this morning. We are keeping an eye on the chat. So if you have any questions or things you need answered or just things you need us to know, uh, you can drop it in the chat and we will address it. Or our production assistant who is typing in the chat will address it. But mm -hmm. someone, someone will talk about it. And we have to give a shout out to our awesome producer, Rippy, who's going to be giving us all the cool stats here. Thanks, Rippy. <laughs> Rippy is the best. And it's a shame you're not hearing her today, or at least at this time. You'll hear her later. Yeah. Well, we put some more caffeine in her. <laughs> wake up, Rippy, <laughs> wake up. All right. We're just about two minutes to this game. So, Cac, is there anything you're looking out for today after seeing boss or excuse me seeing Dublin play yesterday one thing that I saw at uh, the very beginning of this whole uh, lobster roll is they have such a fantastic defense that locks in and also they switch so fluidly into an offensive line and clear the path of the Germans Boston came back and capitalized it and split apart Dublin uh, pretty hardcore last night uh, Dublin I mean they still kept with it and they were very fast reform it back to the front of the pack each time but it's now after having those kind of games, it's like one of those, all right, now they finally got some rest. They're going to regroup. Are they going to bring that same kind of gameplay we saw earlier yesterday? Right. Are we going to see that same intensity? Mm -hmm. um, I hope so because uh, Dublin was really on fire yesterday. Even though they lost to Boston in their second game, um, they were really strong players all around. And what kind of strengths would you say uh, that Sacramento could bring against Dublin that would be effective? Um, I think Sacramento, too, is known for its defense. The blocking contingent has a lot of experience, and a lot of them have played together for a long time. Mm -hmm. Despite the league merger, we have you know, various blocker pairs who have been together for a while. Um, so I think what I'm looking for is seeing how our jammers are escaping this, because what we saw in the last two games yesterday was you know, the struggle was switching from defense to offense, uh, offense quickly enough to be effective for the jammers. So we have a jammer like Ariel Twister, who's usually pretty fast and effective on her own, but some of our newer jammers to the rotation, Bird Dog and Namaste, for example, in their first sanctioned tournament, um, may be still feeling out this level of play. So um, I'm kind of hoping we'll see Sacramento gel a little more. This is the first tournament of the season after a big turnover in the charter. So maybe after a day of playing, uh, we're going to see a stronger Sacramento. And hopefully they're going to absorb all that, carry it through 2019. As we're getting ready for Derby, come up on the jammer line right now for Dublin. Number 83, Dash and Trudy Snow. Go up against number 606, Ariela Twister, who you just mentioned. And Ariel Twister, she has been the starting jammer in all their games so far. Uh, Sacramento trying to start with their strongest move possible. So we're seeing both jammers hitting the pack, but Ariel Twister first out along that inside line. She's your lead jammer. Good momentum for starting that game. And already they're going to the box. There's pivot for Sacramento. That is a multiplayer block call. That's Narnar Jinx. Uh, she got up to six penalties in last night's game. However, she was voted MVP, so those penalties must have been worth it. Ariel Twister coming out on fire already, putting four on the board we for Sacramento. Some quick offense there coming in from Con Artist and the Sacramento pack. However, Con Artist going to the penalty box as a result, followed by Dublin's pivot. It is penalty party here first thing in the morning. That, ex <laughs> that hour lost of sleep must have really messed everyone up. And plus, uh, from what I understand, Dublin isn't used to snow and as they have Dash <laughs> who, and Trudy snow. Who is it at this point? <laughs> who has an amazing video of running through the snow the other day. It is snowing hardcore here at Lobster Roll on day two. Yes, I was afeard driving here today. <laughs> um, that's four points in the air for Dublin. Uh, despite the lead jammer status for Sacramento, I see tw currently 12 points on the board for Dublin, only four for Sacramento. Make that 16 points for Dublin. Yeah, it's great footwork staying on the tiptoes. That is dashing through the snow on through the straightaway between two and three. Pack still hung there. All like as you see the quickness and that cycling back and forth of Dublin's defense, holding at bay Ariella Twister for that little bit. Finally having to let her go, but four and four exchange by both these jammers at this moment. That's right. It looks like Ariella Twister trying to get in for one more pass to even things out. She did put two points up before calling off the jam. A uh, fairly high scoring jam uh, to open the game. One of the highest, I mean, it's I been a low scoring weekend overall. I, I think that is the highest opening jam we've had here. 
I, I agree with that. So that was 10 points for Sacramento, 20 points for Roller Derby. We're two minutes into the game, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, at least they're <laughs> it's a big movement. <laughs> that is. Because <laughs> a lot of times we've been seeing uh, quite often either scoreless jams for the first uh, for the first jam or even just a single point being picked up. Right. I'm seeing in the chat uh, people are wondering who's in what color. Uh, once again, Dublin is in blue. Sacramento is in white. I know that's confusing because Sacramento often plays in blue, but today we are white. And by we, I mean them, not me. <laughs> <laughs> the royal we. <laughs> yes, we. <laughs> Thea now picking up lead jam for Dublin. Nail her swift. Still in the pack. Able to find that opening on turn one through the outer side of the pack. Naylor Swift was one of the most effective jammers for Sacramento yesterday morning in their first game. Um, so I think her play style works better with some hacks than others, and I'm, I'm curious to see how it pays off today. Now coming up to that line, number two, three, Green Hole Cooney. She's going to go skate to skate, and that is number one, two, four, Crystal. Looks like Sacramento starting with a blocker in the penalty box. They're just going to have just three to hold back. I believe that's Greenhold Cooney, 23. Yep, that is. She's up against Crystal for Sacramento. Favoring that inside line as she usually does, gets lead jam on that. Also small stature, but very quick skater for Dublin. We're seeing uh, Narnar Jinx take the cap pass from Crystal, a uh, penalty now. Yep, that is a forearm call, and that is gonna go on number nine zero, Lana Payne. That's going to leave Ooh. Dublin without their pivot. Narnar Jinx out of the pack uh, with the star pass now acting as Sacramento's jammer. Crystal joining the blocking contingent. Yeah, great setup of defense by Sacramento. But as you can see, that, sit, that switch that Dublin can do where they go right into an offense and completely broke up that pack to help Greenhold Cooney get through. Going to pick up four points, but three points also picked up by Sacramento. Not bad. I mean, only... Dublin only winning that jam by one point. It's not enough to tip the score, of course, but uh, it's enough to keep them from running away so early in the game. So we've got Bird Dog in the star for Sacramento up against number 16, Gemerald. I believe Bird Dog is one of the skaters you mentioned. This is our first sanctioned tournament. That's right. Yesterday was her first sanctioned game with Sacramento, and this is her first sanctioned tournament overall, but she has been jamming with Sacramento for, uh, I would say it's at least four years. Uh, all showing great track awareness, recycling back, avoiding any track cut. Bird Dog trying to swing her hips around the blockers there in the apex. The whole pack in a press in turn two. And just every single blocker <laughs> caught in a cyclone. It is, and they're all doing a clockwise cyclone all together. Yeah. Conquistadorable <laughs> almost getting Gemerald out of play. She had her all the way up to the line, but Gemerald stayed in play, got out of the pack, and is now your lead jammer. Wide open for Bird Dog. Takes it, goes through the center. Now working the initial pass, but that's going to be shut down by Gemerald, who's taken into the infield, only picking up two points for Dublin. Now bringing it 30 to 13. And so far, this game is shaping up a little bit like the other ones, where Sacramento's not getting lead jammer as much, and they're mainly. Uh, playing a defensive game where they're just trying to get the jammer out fast enough to put pressure on the other team so that they can't rack up too many points. Hopefully they'll be able to turn that around and play a little more offensively and get the jammer out first. And with that we have 1006. Nail her swift going up against Dash and Trudy Snow. And now Sacramento getting the uh, lead jam with Swifty. This is Naylor Swift's second jam, first time getting lead jammer. Uh, she's getting some help on that outside line from Pippi Long Stomping. One to beat, that is uh, Dublin's pivot up front. And Naylor Swift with four points. Yeah, complete lap around. Finally, Dash and Trace Snow able to get through that pack. Had to recycle back around turn number two. Sacramento's defense really taking it up a notch. Right. Sacramento hitting the pack quickly, trying to open things up. By time for Naylor Swift to get points before Dashing Trudy Snow comes back, but three points on the board for Dashing Trudy Snow, just one for Naylor Swift. Yeah, she found that opening there on turn number three as everyone was focused on the outside, the pack, the inside was just a clear opening for her, yeah, extending big, her skate out. Big <laughs> opening there. 
But uh, overall in that jam, five points for Sacramento, three to Dublin. So a net gain for Sacramento in this jam. And we're getting a timeout with the officials. Make sure everything is A-OK, -okay, that the property people are in the box. And actually, it looks like Swifty is taking a seat in the box with the star for Sacramento. I believe at the end of the jam, she may have gotten a skating out of bounds penalty. I saw the Dublin bench kind of angrily gesturing, like, where is that skating out of bounds? And I think it might have just taken a second for the officials to consider the matter. Mm -hmm. It wasn't official review worthy. It just takes a second sometimes. And with that, with the power start, they had a quick substitution on the line for Dublin. They're now putting in Greenhold Kooning to do this power start for Dublin. Yeah, we've got the pack starting up at the pivot line. Talls and Conquistador Bowl jumping up into the apex and getting the draw back on Greenhold Cooney. That's Talls in the back of the pack. One-on-one uh, -on -one blocking, but getting pushed aside. An apex jump from Greenhold Cooney. She is your lead jammer. Green Hall Cooney coming around, pack now on turn number two. Dublin trying to keep separated uh, one of their blocks versus the pack, and now being released from the box is Swift. Sacramento's got their full blocking contingent reunited, but it's not enough. Green Hall Cooney hopping around the butts on the inside line, coming out of the pack for four points. Swift finally through, now going into the straightaway. Green Cooney trying to take an attempt from the outside. Pack. Go, goes out, tippy toes back in. Pulling off that jam at turn three. One more point on the board for Dublin. Uh, both teams now looks like with a clear penalty box heading into the next jam. A quick shout out to one of our awesome sponsors down here. Luckily they didn't do too much travel, but everyone traveling here is picking up all their gear. That's Bruce Boutique, who's the world's largest derby store made for Derby by Derby. You can check them out on www.brewsboutique.com. And they have fresh meat packages also for new skaters. So if you have new skaters coming to your league, send them over to brewsboutique.com to pick up a fresh meat package. Absolutely. We have Namaste in her first jam of the game for Sacramento up against number 83, Dashing Trudy Snow for Dublin. Both jammers getting recycled back to the jammer line. That's right, that whole pack still in the initial straightaway. No real progress being made. Seeing a forearm penalty sending one of uh, Dublin's blockers out. Yeah, two it, blockers now to the box for Dublin. That is a, a boon for Sacramento. Namaste <laughs> just racing around two downed Dublin blockers. Um, she's scored points. Sacramento now trying to buy a little time for Namaste to complete one more scoring pass. Yeah. But, but 169, Brudali Lowcock able to draw the cutting penalty. Namaste almost entering behind her hips, but got in a little bit of a tangle, wasn't far back enough. Now you got Jess, uh, Dash and Trudy Snow trying to get around. Narnar Jinx. <laughs> Good, luck <laughs> Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Yes, Narnar Jinx, uh, if you saw the interview yesterday, she is fueled by love for her dog, Richard. <gasps> Did you say what kind of dog? It's a Pomeranian, Ooh. super fluffy, and it's all over her Instagram. It's, it's a flu. <laughs> <laughs> I know because he Richard always comes to practice. So, um, <laughs> In any case, Dashing Trudy Snow now dashing into the pack, caught behind Narnar Jinx and Rhodes Warrior. I believe they uh, killed that whole penalty. Or did they? Did she get one scoring oh, pass oh, while got, I was talking about dogs? Through, yeah, yeah she, she got around once. Sorry, I'm a, no. I'm a professional. <laughs> I can't say the same about me, but nevertheless, <laughs> Namaste able to pick up an additional four points for Sacramento. Trudy threw again, pick up another four, bringing 46 26. That's right, our jammers are matching point for point, it looks like. Although. It looks like Namaste was able to get another three points uh, before the whistle, so another net game for Sacramento creeping up. Current score is 46 to 29, uh, Dublin leading. We have 19 minutes left in the first period, and Cac, this is a pretty close game. It, it, it is, and it, like when you say don't count Sacramento out, definitely don't do so. They're learning, they're adapting pretty fast to Dublin style, and they have capitalized a little bit, especially when you, those penalties come in on their blockers. Uh, right now we got Erla uh, Twister and AK. And I just, because she's number 47, I always still want to call her AK-47. I, I feel the same. I'm not sure if I should just say AK or AK-47, but I have a feeling 
either is fine. I see Sacramento's bench encouraging them to make a break for it. Buy time for Ariel Twister to get those points. And it, the pack is disarrayed, but it paid off. Yeah, taking that four and slamming the door. That was very lucky because AK was moving pretty fast into that pack, but the pack was even faster they were just by a fraction. We saw a little bit of that strategy emerging last night too. Because Ariel's such a fast jammer, they can run it out. Um, we're taking an official review right now uh, for Sacramento. So not exactly sure what they might be calling. Sometimes you can have a good idea from the view from the cheap seats, but not this time. <laughs> But when it comes to like trying to learn anything, I always go to like my favorite source, which is Blood and Thunder magazine. Because life's always better on roller skates. You can check them out at bloodandthundermag.com. Absolutely. Life is better on roller skates. Except for me. I, I'm fragile. Or fragile, as they would say. <laughs> fragile. <laughs> like, I, I get bruises watching skaters play. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see all the bruises I currently have because I'm wearing leggings. <laughs> but there are a lot. So but it's a tough sport. But you twinkle and also sparkle. <laughs> and why be flat when you can sparkle? Especially <laughs> with refreshingly natural polar seltzer. Has no calories, no sodium, no sugars, no sweeteners, and no gluten. Hashtag polar derby. You know what was also refreshingly natural was that segue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my one for the day. Headset <laughs> off. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> that's it. Pack it up, boys. <laughs> oh, no. All right, so official review is ongoing. It looks like this game has been pretty back and forth, like pretty even uh, lead jammer statuses. No one's really taken a dominant uh, position in this game so far. It's been back and forth. We've got a 13 point lead for Dublin, but as we know in the game of roller derby, 13 points, uh, not a big deal. That's you know one, one strong jam and you could turn this game around. So, so far, uh, you know, 12 minutes into the game, I think Sacramento has a fighting chance of this being their first win of the weekend. But on the other hand, Dublin may uh, get into it, wake up a little more. Well, they seem plenty awake, but they may gel and get used to Sacramento and run away with this game. Absolutely. And it looks like Sacramento doing a quick exchange of pivots, calling off Rhodes Warrior and putting Talls in. So there is a plan of brewing with Sacramento. I will say Talls has the tightest plow so stop of anyone I've seen in my entire life. <laughs> she can stop in about one foot. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty enviable. <laughs> and now returning back to the benches. It looks like they <laughs> won. They Sacra look happy. Yeah, Sacramento, it looks like they might have actually won this here. That's uh, Captain Shock and Auburn coming back to the bench with a grin on her face. Um, I see, it looks like Dublin is putting a jammer in the penalty box, that's 47, so oh. whatever happened in the last jam, it looks like they managed to assess a penalty and get a power start, uh, Sacramento putting in Ariel a twister. Yeah, and AK is actually joining blocker Maniha, so they're getting an extra pack advantage over Dublin as we're going into jam number nine here. We're down to 18 minutes, 22 seconds in our first half, second game of day two of Lobster Roll 2019. Thank you, Boston Roller Derby, for hosting this. It's the very first Lobster Roll, very first sanctioned tournament of the year, and the first sanctioned non-playoff uh, tournament bout on, uh, well, excuse me, just tournament games on uh, Twitch TV here with WFTD TV. So I've gotten some information, oh my goodness, about this official review. White was looking, Sacramento asked for a uniform violation on uh, AK for, uh, number 47, AK, for not wearing a mouth guard. Oh, and that's, a, that's a good catch. The refs agreed, and I will say that is some rules lawyering nonsense and <laughs> I live for that so <laughs> I have a feeling Shock and Auburn may have been behind that she's the queen of these kind of official reviews uh, Ariel Twister now quick out from the pack oh my goodness wow. and a quick pass cannot be contained this could be a turning point for Sacramento really low cock all on the technicality yeah yeah that's how really low cock returns in front of the pack try to form <laughs> some uh, some aid but 
able to do two full scoring passes, calling it off with still AK just standing in the box. So back to back <laughs> power starts on the same power uh, penalty. That's right. We're going to see Naylor Swift go in on the power start. Both AK and her blocker number 95. Uh, that is Manija, of course. We already said that. Trapped in the penalty box. So we're seeing, again, the short pack for Dublin and only one jammer on the track. Sacramento uh, with a plan here. They're in only five points away from taking control of this game. Naylor Swift, now the lead jammer. AK back on the track, but Dublin's pivot now heading to the penalty box. They, they oh, added two minus one. But <laughs> great great use of thro throwing your teammates. <laughs> that's <laughs> that my favorite activity. Baltimore launching <laughs> Chancleta uh, into Swift, but taking her out of bounds, forcing that recycle back. Naylor Swift caught up in the churn on the straightaway. Pink Freud and Shock Auburn now heading to the penalty box. Shock and Auburn is a pivot and a, tr a track cut. AK from Dublin going to the penalty box. Naylor Swift now, hardly any blockers on the track to beat. She has the opportunity to power jam it. Absolutely, and now being recycled hardcore to the back of turn number three. Yeah, Dublin Almost is really looking to waste time here. Oh, yes. And another one. Oh, looked like she might have had her out of bounds, but Swift, yep, nope. was able to stay and pick up four points and going to call it out. We're going to have a third power start for Sacramento here, Stone. This kind of momentum is what Sacramento needs. Normally, I mean, we saw yesterday jammer penalties plaguing Sacramento, and the power jams were really making the difference in the game against Naptown. So now we're seeing reversal of fortune. Sacramento keeping the jammers in the game. Dublin caught in this cycle of jammer penalties, all starting with the, of course, equipment violation, yep. lack of a mouth guard. And with that, if you're playing the game at home, you know what that means. Lead change has happened. The Sacramento taking ahead by three <laughs> and taking of course, Ariel Twister taking control of this jam. That's right, Ariel Twister uh, <laughs> just bobbing and weaving through that pack, and it's another four points. She is one of the most effective jammers uh, probably on the planet. Yeah, incredibly fast, incredibly <laughs> agile. I'll say that, I'll say that. Yeah, incredibly fast, but incredibly agile as well. And she able to dig her way through Dublin, gonna put up another four. As Dublin had their jam released AK out there, but now 57, 46. What a turn of the game, and we're only a quarter way through this. Uh, absolutely, and I think that may be Sacramento's, one of their biggest jams yet, 12 point jam. Not quite the biggest, but it's up there. Uh, and in any case, enough to change the score. Like you said, 57, 46, Sacramento leading. We're one quarter into this game, 15 minutes left in the first half. And bringing out Rockin' the Star for Dublin is 800 Thea going against 124 Crystal of Sacramento. Sacramento still with a blocker in the box, finally get released, but coming back into the box, that's going to be Talls. Dublin with their first lead in the last three jams now that they're, they've broken free from these uh, jammer penalty troubles. I see. Number three, Valdemort trying to pull Crystal on a cut, signaling to the ref, hey, this is a cut, but ref's not agreeing. Crystal still on the track, of course. Ooh. Now I see Crystal going to the penalty box on a forearm. Yep. Uh, power jam now for Dublin, which I think this, I yeah. was about to say it's their first power jam, but I don't think it is. Yeah, I think it's the second one that they have here. But regardless, one thing I've been noticing is the heavy penalty so far in the first quarter of this game. It's just back and forth, just rotating blockers from both teams just in that jam alone where we had two res uh, one release, two back in for Sacramento, one in for Dublin, and then the third, which was that power, uh, power jam, that uh, forearm penalty. But with that, Thea is going to pick up those four points, quickly go off. Now we're going to have a power start for Green Hall Cooney. This is her second power start. Absolutely. I do want to address a comment I saw on Twitch saying that uh, mouth guard problems aren't a rules learning question and it's a safety issue, which I absolutely agree it is, but I mean it's a rules lawyering question in terms of the fact that you saw it and were able to call an official review instead of just saying, hey, you forgot your mouth guard. So playing the game to its fullest extent for your advantage. And Crystal being released from the box, Greenhall Cooney is getting called on a back block. 
Oh my goodness. And, and I think, yeah, so I don't think she was cleared for a lead on this one. So I believe, yeah, Crystal has the opportunity to come out of the box to not only have the power jam, but take the lead. Right. And I see our Sacramento blockers coming in, trying to clear that inside lane, but Crystal getting the drawback by Dublin's pivot. They are in turn two in that wide part of the track. Maybe it'll be a little easier to escape, but Crystal's caught up behind number 575 Pippa, number 17, Dirty Knees Louise, uh, just unable to break free from that defense. Pippa is one of like the, one of the best for Dublin when it comes to anchoring a tripod. She can lock you down hold, and hold on for dear life. And uh, Maria Von Slap as a tag partner for her have been proven to be fantastic. We're seeing the defense in this jam lock down. Of course, the words leave my mouth. And uh, number 23, Green Hong Cooney now out of the pack, not lead jammer. Crystal still the opportunity to become lead, getting the signal from the bench to call it. Um, she called uh, it off just in time to keep Dublin from scoring any points. Yeah, they tried, They tried. she tried to hop that apex right there, Green Hong Cooney got called just before then. And now a Fisher review again being called by Sacramento. Right, they won their last official review, so they retain their review, they can call another one. Although, uh, traditionally, the officials are reluctant to let you win too many official reviews in a row. Uh, so I'll be curious to see if this one pays off. If it does, then they would achieve the what they call the half muffin status. All right, while we're here, I want to tell you about some of our amazing sponsors, uh, the Cambridge School of Culinary Arts sponsoring the tournament this weekend, offering professional culinary and pastry training programs, recreational cooking classes for all, and private cooking or baking classes for family parties and corporate events. Uh, well that sounds really fun to me, actually. I would totally do that. Visit cambridgeculinary.com for more information. So if you're out here in Massachusetts, Oh, and I highly recommend eating in the areas with the culinary school because a lot of, a lot of the students go and work at all these uh, local restaurants and small diners, but they use it to experiment and try out new recipes. And that's why they say instead of going to the big chains, you go and eat local because a lot of these uh, uh, establishments around these schools have all these students trying the, uh, the newest recipes so you can have the most amazing food that you'll never have anywhere else. I love that. And I love when, you know, I've never been to Boston. This is my first time visiting. So I love going to the local restaurants and seeing, you know, what's different to experience compared to California. Yeah, and uh, Scarlett Hertia brought us <laughs> a big bag of beaver nuggets that uh, uh, Scar Trek has been destroying. Gross, but they're good. Oh, yeah, they're delicious. They're kind of like sweet Cheetos. Oh, they, yeah. Oh, that's so amazing. <laughs> she said it has caramel. It sounds like a religious experience. It, it, for it you. is. She says it's more of a caramel, but it, to me, I get that maple syrup taste of it. It's really great. <laughs> I think uh, high fructose cor corn syrup is what uh, the flavor you're looking for. <laughs> oh, 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 you mean bad stuff for me. <laughs> I, I'm not here to ascribe value. Uh, look like Sacramento did lose that. Uh, do you have information on it? I hear that it was, they were asking for an insubordination penalty. Um, I'm just receiving our notes. So Sacramento was looking for an insubordination on the uh, Dublin Jammer, but the referee said there was not enough room at the time er, of the penalty. So Sacramento lost their view, but good effort. I mean, they won one official review this half already, which frankly is more than most teams can say. <laughs> oh, that Swift took the lead, picking up a single point before calling that one off. So one point picked up by Sacramento. Keeping up at an eight point deficit. We're going to the 11 minute mark here in the first half. Now it's going to call Bird Dog for Sacramento and Dashing Trudy Snow for Dublin. And we will be Dashing Trudy Snow in the parking lot later. Maybe we can get a snowball fight between all the teams. That would be great. <laughs> that would be pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> but the pack moved up for Dublin and doing a great job keeping the bird dog out and taking her out at the turn number one. And Dash and Snow did find that opening, is gonna be in control of this jam as the pack now moving into turn number two. Bird dog still trying to fight through that defense, but also Sacramento doing the best they can to split up Dublin. Uh, bird dog got the star in hand, but uh, a track cut sending her to the penalty box. So it's now a power jam for Dash and Trudy Snow. Uh, exactly the person I would not to let have a power jam. 
right? And all she needs, uh, she's already done her scoring pass. All she needs is two full passes to tie this back up. And that's not much. Yep. We're not for a power jam. Yep. Forum call on the pivot for Sacramento. Oh, stop holding on Trudy. And <laughs> pushing her out. She will pick up four for now, but doing the smart thing, calling it off. Now yeah, that was a very cautious rollback because yeah. from this angle, it looked like Pippi Longstomping didn't quite get Dashing Trudy Snow all the way out. But Dashing Trudy Snow taking the rollback and then taking direction from the bench to lock a bird dog in the penalty box. Uh, so this is kind of a mirror of what Sacramento did earlier. So we're seeing now uh, Thea, I believe, in the star for Dublin with the power start. We've got just Tall's Shocking Auburn and Conquistadorable on the track to hold her back. Not enough. Uh, Thea out with lead, uh, just seconds into the jam. Yeah, and if you watch how uh, Dublin lined up right on the pivot line and then just swooped in in those five seconds to create that tension on the backs of Sacramento who was waiting for Thea, that gave her the opening and picking up four points and quickly shutting down Bird Dog who just got back onto the track. And uh, that brings us to a tie. We're at 58 to 58, eight, and eight minutes, 50 seconds left in the first half. And we're taking a timeout for Sacramento probably to take a minute to cool down and make sure they don't lose control of this game. I'm actually a big fan of your tattoos over here. You got some great work on you. <laughs> Thank you. And if uh, if you're going to be staying in the area, I definitely recommend checking out Good Mojo Tattoos in Beverly, Mass. You can schedule a free consult with one of their artists today. For more information, check out, check out goodmojotattoos.com. Well, maybe if I have some free time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just give them a call Sunday night. I, I, I need a tattoo. <laughs> I need, it's I, need, urgent. I need my ink. What the f I know that feeling where you just want ink at the most, at like at three in the morning. <laughs> but <laughs> unfortunately, you can't. <laughs> that's, a, that's a business opportunity for someone. All right, so while we're here on this timeout, uh, New England Roller Derby would like, New England Roller Derby Report would like to thank their production sponsor, Sh Sociopath, S E W C I O P A T H. Sociopath is a skater run business offering custom sewn to order leg wear for teams and individuals. Size inclusive active wear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of arm man and helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. Team discounts are available. Please see sociopath.ca for more details. Coming back from our timeout. Sacramento already having two official reviews and a timeout used in the first half here. But called up to the line, that is number 606, Ariella Twister, going up against Green Hill Cooney, number 23. Who is going to pick up that lead? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only lie. I thought for sure, I had my eyes on Ariel, and she twisted uh, up the outside line, and it was so fast. I was like, oh, Ariel's the lead. But then I looked up and saw that our Dublin Jammer, uh, also uh, Greenhall Cooney, got out on the inside line just as quickly, but was lead jammer. So uh, Greenhall Cooney calling it off, Not uh, it's not worth the effort for them. No, especially when you have a tie game like this, better off just stop, reset. And with that reset, Jemerald is coming up for Dublin. And that's gonna be Nail Her Swift for Sacramento. Nail Her Swift uh, attacking that pack ferociously and it looks like a forum penalty sending pivot talls to the penalty box. Naylor Swift on the heels of Gemerald. Uh, Gemerald of course the lead jammer status. Sacramento getting the signal from the bench to get to the front of the pack trying to buy some time but Gemerald calls off the jam another 0-0 jam. Um, when will the madness end? When will the point scoring resume? We're <laughs> locked in fruitless battle for <laughs> minutes on end. This is the derby I enjoy because I'm starting to sweat over here watching this. <laughs> and this is where we, we start to wake up a little more. <laughs> it doesn't matter that I've lost an hour of sleep, that you've lost an hour of sleep. <laughs> it's <laughs> the immaterial. The adrenaline's now starting to kick in here. And getting up on that line, 108, Namaste, going up against number 83, Dash and Trudy Snow. And this is the kind of game we love. It's exciting. You have no idea who's going to win. It's a test of skill to see who can adjust and adapt to the game. Multiplayer block called on Dublin blocker. That is number 17, Dirty Knees Louise. She's been a big part of the pack. Dublin with the lead jammer status. Dashing Trudy Snow uh, out of the pack. And... We're now five jams without lead for Sacramento. So they had that good run uh, starting with their successful official review. But right now, Dublin's got them locked out. 
And now look at Sacramento crushing onto da Dash and Trudy Snow. Hey, trying to force her into the infield. Was able to hop over a little bit over that apex. But with all that time, Dublin's defense also kicked it up a notch. Kept Swift locked at bay there. She only was starting to get halfway through her initial pass when that just got called off. So now lead change number two, Dublin, 62 to 58. Still a super close game. That's just one scoring pass difference. We've got six minutes left in the first half of this game. And I'm loving it. This is a great game. Anything that, that, that feels like an evenly matched game, especially multiple lead changes like that, it, it, that is like the entertain because that's where the intensity comes in. Right, that's where you're seeing, oh my goodness. Well, to cut that sentence off, that's where we're seeing Ariel uh, dive roll over her opposing <laughs> blockers. <laughs> and Ariel Twister, unfazed by that little incident, she's your lead <laughs> jammer, uh, looking for a quick point uh, to defray the efforts of Dublin with their cat pass, number 95, Manika taking over. But Ariel able to complete a scoring pass, put four points up. We're back to a tied game. Uh, both teams sitting at 62 points. I'm going to start having heart issues watching this. <laughs> I know. I'm going to need my heart <laughs> medication. <laughs> pass me my pills, Rippy. Pass me my pills. <laughs> Rippy, hey. don't you have those pills for us? <laughs> that we talked about earlier. Oh, they're the beaver nuggets. Oh, you Excellent. don't even have pockets. <laughs> don't ch don't do that check your pockets gesture. <laughs> You're full of lies and statistics. <laughs> Green Hole Cooney up rocking the star for Dublin and Naylor Swift for Sacramento. Naylor Green. Swift getting a little help from con artist, but still not quite out of the pack. Green Hole Cooney looking for the outside line, but Sacramento getting back up in front of her. I think that is Lushy and Pippi long stomping up front. Brutally low cock recycling back swift. Pippi long stomping now behind the pack, but taking advantage of the situation, playing a little offense. Dublin with the lead jammer status. Greenhall Cooney now out in front. Naylor Swift trying to buy a little time, but not fast enough. Greenhall Cooney getting those four points, calling off the jam. No points for Sacramento. And, and with that, Dublin is going to pack advantage starting in. Sacramento with two to the box, including a pivot. That's going to be a tough start for Sacramento, down two blockers, but they're fielding talls and conquistadorables. So if you got to put anyone out there, you might as well put out some extremely strong blockers. And Pink Freud going up, rocking the star for Sacramento and dancing on the jammer line. Getting, feeling that getting in the zone. Yeah, yeah. I believe this is the first time we've seen Pink Freud in the star today. Yeah. Uh, I know yesterday, Scar Trek and I were discussing the fact that Pink was in the jammer rotation last season, but not this season. She's chosen to play as a blocker. Uh, meanwhile, Gemerald, your lead jammer for Dublin. Uh, Conquista Dorable trying to knock her out, not quite successful. Gemerald takes her four points and ends the jam, uh, thanks to Pink Freud uh, picking up speed and putting on the pressure. I, I do have to give her credit for uh, trying to cast Mesmerize on Dublin with her little dance. <laughs> She'll get you. Well. <laughs> She's a witch, but in a good way, in case anyone's concerned about that. I was wondering why I saw a newt running across the track earlier. Yeah, so. yeah you gotta be careful. <laughs> They're slippery. All right, we've got Ariel Twister out there in the star up against number 83, dashing Trudy Snow. Trudy trying to find an outside opening. Paused for a second, eyed that inside, but Sacramento immediately recognized that, pushing their way in, keeping her from getting through, and that's gonna open up that spot for Ariella. That's right, Con Artist returned from the penalty box, played the offense. Oh my goodness, Ariel Twister going for one of the world's biggest apex jumps, uh, effortlessly leaping uh, beyond the pack, four points on the board, uh, bringing our score 70 to 66. Sacramento trailing by four points, two and a half minutes left in the first half. And again, I really need those heart pills. <laughs> you and I both, we got, we got the <laughs> My yeah. medication. Oh yeah, the, this, I know. I'll just I'll just drive my face into the snow outside. That'll like get me like recentered again afterwards during <laughs> halftime. I'm gonna have to do some uh, you know mindfulness meditation at the half. <laughs> We've got Naylor Swift in the star for Sacramento up against Thea for Dublin. Can I get a low block call? That is gonna go on Dublin. More whistles being blown. Got illegal contact that is going to go on uh, pink actually. 
Kia first out of the pack, she's your lead jammer. Conquistador ball hit her out, but went down in the process. Nail her swift, creeping up on Thea pretty dang close. Uh, Thea trying to grab those points, keep Swifty off the board. Looks like three more points for Dublin, none for Sacramento. But I, just <laughs> I can only <laughs> chuckle. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, there's so much yeah. going on. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm still like feeling the reverberation from Conquista Dorable bump there. To the, like you could She'll see, get you. you could see the sh like the her get rattled <laughs> when she got, <laughs> went out. Sounds like that's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Conquista Dorable is a big hitter, and she is fast. She's like a shark. She sends blood, and she will come to eat you. Green Hole Cooney rocking the star for Dublin. Nala Slay. And looks like pivot for Sacramento going to the box. That's Rhodes, Rhodes Warrior. Warrior. Nala Slay at the front of the pack trying to work those blockers back and forth, make some space. Now that Green Hole Cooney's out of the pack as lead jammer, Sacramento coming in trying to play offense. Nala Slay taking the star off her hat, but unfortunately the pivot, Rhodes, is in the penalty box, so no recourse at the moment for Nala Slay. Uh, Four points picked up by Green Hull Cooney. Nice 11 point spread. And a recycle back, Namaste. Namaste caught up behind all four blockers in turn one. It was a tough position to uh, be in. Yeah, you don't want to be between Lana Payne and Maneha. <laughs> yeah, that's not, you ain't not going the plan. Anywhere. You ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Rhodes Warrior back on the track, but Pink Freud leaving it. Sacramento still three blockers, but Namaste now able to pass the star to Rhodes Warrior. Um, another player who has a fair bit of jamming experience, but playing as a blocker. Green Hall calling that one off after hitting the Sacramento wall. We'll pick up an additional two more points now as we're going to go to halftime, 83 to 66. That's uh. Dublin uh, taking it away a little bit, 10 points, pretty large jam for what we've seen outside of that first jam of the game. Before we hit the halftime, New England Roller Derby Report would like to thank their production sponsor, Sociopath, S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H. Sociopath is a skater-run business offering custom sewn or leg wear for teams and individuals. Size inclusive active wear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armbands and helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. Team discounts are available. Please see sociopath.ca for more details. All right, we are going to go to our halftime. We'll be back in about 14 minutes, and I'm going to go build a snowman in that mountain. I'm going to find some heart medication. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Good afternoon. <coughs> Welcome back to the second half of Dublin Roller Ver Derby versus Sacramento Roller Derby. We're here in day two of the first ever lobster roll hosted by Dublin. <laughs> it's not hosted by Dublin. It's hosted <laughs> by Boston Roller Derby, which is where we are <laughs> in Massachusetts. Um, clearly, I have lost my mind after this incredibly exciting game. We've seen uh, the teams going back and forth, very close games, ties several times. We're coming into the second half with a score of 83 to 66. Dublin leading by just 16 points. Um, I am Rosetta Stone. And I am the GAC. We are here uh, to talk you through this awesome game. Yeah, it's, it's been very interesting so far. And again, we talked about right at the very start, the very first jam, it was a high scoring jam, 20 to 10, but that also is heavy, heavy on the penalties. Throughout all of this, our awesome producer, Rippy, has given me some information here. So as we're looking at the penalty tracking here, on Dublin's side, they get about 17 penalties. Overall, uh, the only one in trouble so far right now, number nine zero, a lot of pain with four. But the thing is that the penalties spread across a majority of the team. They're just kind of evened out. On Sacramento's side, who you see in the white, uh, that is 22 penalties altogether. Uh, number 0618, Pink Floyd with four. Number 1985, Carnaros with four. And not too far behind, number 970, Narnar Binks with three. Uh, more focus around them. Again, it's actually quite the mix of a uh, little of everything. We've seen multiplayer box. We've seen opposition. We've seen uh, il uh, illegal contact. We've seen track cuts. So it's pretty much just trying to regather yourself after losing an hour of sleep and having so many awesome uh, games uh, yesterday. Just refocus and get right back into it. Absolutely, Kak. And we are back into it. Dublin coming out with the first lead jammer status of the half. Dashing Trudy Snow out in front. Naylor Swift 
barely 10 feet behind her, uh, putting on the pressure. Dublin blockers were in the back of the pack. Joshin Kirby Snow said this is not worth it and called off the jam. Uh, Dublin with a skater finishing on the penalty. She started the last jam in the penalty box, and there she remains. So coming into the next jam, we've got Bird Dog in the white for Sacramento, and we have Thea in blue for Dublin. So I went outside to go make that snow, uh, snowman. Unfortunately, I got as far as the snowball and started throwing it at PR McGinnon's car <laughs> out of spite. <laughs> Bird but Dog is through, lead jammer. And Thea still trying to dig away. Sacramento coming back with a strong defensive wall, trying to be helped out by number 95, Maniha, to get that opening. And Maniha has been a real force for Dublin so far in this tournament. It looks like Thea took the cap off to get through the pack, uh, finish her initial pass, and then put it back on. Bird Dog getting three points in the pack before calling it off, feeling the pressure from Dublin Jammer. Uh, thank you again as we talk about Boston Roller Derby for hosting the first ever lobster roll here on WFTD TV here on Twitch. Let me see your lobster roll. I, I'm still saying that they should have designed an award called the Rock Lobster Award, given to like one awesome person. I would, I would, uh, be excited for that award. I'd nominate all our volunteers because they've been absolutely amazing. This has been just a, it's been a great tournament. It's almost been almost flawless, just a flow of everything. Absolutely. It's if you're not here, you're missing out. Um, and you're also missing out on Greenhawk Cooney being your lead jammer for Dublin. We've got Shock and Auburn now uh, pivot for Sacramento taking the cat pass uh, from uh, I can't remember who started this jam. I think jam. it was from the start, actually. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> did Shock and Auburn start this jam I believe so. as the jammer? Yes, she did, 4-5-1. Yeah, um, so Shock and Auburn uh, out here as the jammer from the beginning of the jam, out of the pack. And we got a, a track Ooh. cut on Green Hole Cooney. And a, a back A forearm. Block. Actually, it's a forearm on Green Hole Cooney, a back block on Shock and Auburn. It's a race to the penalty box. Shock and Auburn, the first to sit down. Uh, released now that Greenhall Cooney is out Chuck and Greenhall Cooney now being released right after of course uh, one jammer sits the other leaves uh, we're in for a two minute jam we still have 50 seconds left um, this could be another one of those turning point uh, spots in the game and as you mentioned before shock picking up four points starting to make that comeback both these teams have tied twice so far in the first half yep. We're seeing Pauls and Pink Floyd uh, shove Greenhold Cooney out of the pack, getting her drawn back into the straightaway. Shock and Auburn also being drawn back by the Dublin pivot. Um, this is going to be a tough jam, especially Shock and Auburn, not normally a jammer. It's a, definitely a different type of endurance, but Shock and Auburn out for another four points. Uh, currently one scoring pass ahead of Greenhold Cooney of Dublin. Great line up there. Pink actually holds in that anchor. And Conquistador. <laughs> <laughs> Just out, out for blood, as always. <laughs> it's not like you're not going anywhere. She's just going to send you out, <laughs> out, out in you're, orbit. You're being delivered <laughs> to the outside. And that is uh, that's what, that what helps make part of a, a great defensive line that Sh uh, Sacramento has reestablished so far in the second half. Two uh, look like two points were picked up by Sacramento, an additional three by Dublin, 91-79. And that is going to bring out Ariella Twister against Gemerelda. Uh, it is a f uh, full house on the flat track until that whistle. <laughs> yeah. Gemerald out of the pack first for Dublin. Ariel Twister about uh, half a track behind. So Sacramento looking for that defensive moment, but Gemerald feeling the pressure from Ariel getting, uh, it looks like, two or three points. I can't quite see yet. Uh, two points and calling off the jam. We're sitting at, oh, it was three points after all. 94 to 79, Dublin in the lead. 25 minutes left in the game. Getting up on that line, number eight, three, Dash and Trudy Snow going against one zero zero six Nailer Swift. Swift all the way up on the jammer line, Trudy Snow Pulled back all the way to turn four, give herself a little bit of a boost. 
We're seeing Kunky Sidorbal start the jam, playing offense, but switching to defense as Dashing Through the Snow moves to the inside. Uh, Dashing Through the Snow caught behind the pack. Neil Her Swift caught all the way behind the pack, uh, but trying to creep along that outside line, and it's successful. Neil Her Swift, now your lead jammer for Sacramento. And yeah, very surprising because Pippa was holding her back and recycled back through the infield. But yeah, the, the, the quick maneuvering and an apex jump. My goodness, that's a full four for Sacramento. Uh, another big apex jump. Um, this is a great game for apex jumps. <laughs> and now Swift colliding into the backside of the wall. That is Dublin. Dash True Snow working the initial pass now. Nailer and Swift still going. She had the opportunity to call up the jam, but trusting the blockers pulls with the hit. I thought for sure Dash and Trudy Snow is out of play, but she just barely she, stayed a, in. A three-quarter turn on one toe stop. <laughs> it was beautifully balanced and right back in and <laughs> getting those points. What can you do, Cac? Wow. Well, that was an eight-point jam for Sacramento, bringing them up to 87. Dublin Roller Derby almost to that century mark. Four more points for them. They are at 98, so they have currently an 11 point lead. Not a lot. Um, I keep saying that, but it's <laughs> true because, you know, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, but the fact but of the matter is Sacramento is my lead. <laughs> but again, I'll always <laughs> point out, when you say I uh, never count a team out, we've already seen uh, uh, some complete changes uh, in the second half on a few different bouts already on day one. We see one team may having control of about 90% of the game, and then within the last few jams, the tide turns, and the other team, which would be the underdog, comes firing back. And we're getting a no pass, no penalty being assessed to Thea, who is out, and going to the box, uh, I think uh, blocking with the back of the head, that is Ariella Twista. So we're gonna have no lead jammer here. Uh, we're gonna go for two whole minutes. We've still got a minute and 20 seconds left in this jam. Um, defense turning it on. That's Pink Floyd, Con Arnis, and Narnar Jinx at the front, hanging on to Thea, holding on for dear life. Um, trying to destroy this power jam. But Dublin coming in for that offense. Pink Floyd, Narnar Jinx with the double tap on Thea. But Thea out of the pack for four more points. And I think, you know, we've been talking about the score, and some people have been saying the score seems really low. And I think we can't count out the impact of the death of the jammer lap point. Absolutely. Because that would have been a five point pass for Dublin. And I think we're seeing the impact in uh, lower scores than we might expect. But now, Ariel Twister. Ooh, oh my good. What a watch on Coletta. <laughs> Just him. <laughs> Going yeah. straight for but it. Ariel Twister. And then dipping under oh. the pack on the outside line. Uh, heart attacks again. We really need that heart medication. The both of them. That was, that was fantastic hit. And neither one of them. It was, it was like, like when they say the unstoppable force meeting, the immovable object. <laughs> they collided. Happened. Both stayed up. Chancletter then like try to make that quick turn, but Ariel Twist a little too quick on her skates, wraps around her. So we're seeing four points apiece. Ariel trying to jump the apex along the uh, exit of the turn. Uh, oh. I'm not sure if Ariel just got a penalty called on her. Uh, watching this replay here. Boom, there's that collision off to the left side of your screen. We're gonna watch this one more time. It's just worth it. wait for it. Here, here comes wrapping around Ariel Twister. Bam, <laughs> the impact. I kind of want a gif of that. <laughs> Make it happen, internet. I believe in you, hashtag Derby Twitter. Yeah. All right. And yeah, Ariel Twister in the penalty box. I did not see what the penalty was, but it's immaterial because it's a power start for Greenhall Cooney of Dublin. Uh, up front, Dorothy Vader uh, trying to be the last line of defense, but Greenhall Cooney out as a lead jammer. Dublin with a 15 point lead right now, looking to widen it. Greenhall with a quick move around Tulls, who's now separated away from the rest of Sacramento. Four points picked up, Greenhall, Cooney coming around, back still locked up around the pivot line. Yeah, and Greenhall, Cooney, of course, since the pack is almost into the turn, has the opportunity to push the pack into turn one and make a little space on that inside line, but doesn't quite work out. Conquista Norble with the drawback. And on Dublin, Lana Payne drawing back Ariella Twister. Uh, I'm hearing a penalty now sending Pink Croy to the box. 
Um, I think we're seeing that second half penalty pressure amp up on some of these players. Yeah, I believe that's her fifth one coming in. All right, Greenhalgh Cooney feeling the pressure. Ariel the Twister looks like she may be in a little pain. I did see her getting her ankle wrapped yeah, it was at the half. Well, yeah, and then it was like when she collided with Alana Payne on the outside going to turn one there. Like, Alana Payne didn't even notice she was coming. She just turned around because she just felt that collision. And Ariel the Twister went twisting, as they would say, to the outside, took a hard bump. Absolutely, it was a really big impact. Um, in that jam, uh, scoreboard showing four points for Dublin, none for Sacramento. So although I thought it was a bigger jam than that, but I may just be smushing it all together. So we're sitting at 114 to 95, Dublin uh, creeping out with that lead. And I would like to thank all our EMTs doing a fantastic job here, taking care of all of our skaters. And speaking of health medicine, Evolved Health Chiropractic and Sports Medicine is one of our great sponsors here. If you're experiencing pain, discomfort, or just want to feel or move better, Evolved Health Chiropractic and Sports Medicine can help. Using a unique combination of muscle and joint manipulation, physiotherapy, and customized therapeutic exercise, we aim to get you better and faster. Visit our website for more information. You can check them at EvolvedHealthChiropractic.com. All right, I've just been informed by our projection assistant, Pippi, or Rippy Longstocking, um, 618 Pink, 0618 Pink Freud is going, uh, is out of the game. She seven. picked up her seventh penalty oh. in that last jam. Uh, team captain, it looks like Crystal now sitting in the penalty box on her behalf. That's a real loss because Pink Freud, a strong blocker, and also a formidable jammer when she is put in. Absolutely, we've seen a few a uh, few times being that anchor in the tripod for uh, Sacramento. But now we have Jammeral jamming for Dublin, a uh, lead jammer up against Bird Dog, who has now passed the star to pivot Narnar Jinx. Feeling the pressure, Jammeral ending the jam after one scoring pass. That's four more points for Dublin. Uh, zero points for Sacramento in that jam. Dublin chipping away, trying to widen the lead. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we've seen some of these games run away in the second half. I know that's not what Sacramento wants to happen, but um, it it could happen. 18 minutes to go. Uh, anything can happen and to anything can invoke happen here that. In rural Derby. <laughs> Literally anything. <laughs> All right, game is back on. Uh, Dashing Trudy Snow facing off against Nail Her Swift. Both jammers trapped behind this pack, but uh, the churn beginning. Nail Her Swift out of the pack with a little shirt whip off a teammate. Um, she is your lead jammer. Dashing Trudy Snow taking off the cap to get out of the pack, but Putting it back on, it's not a star pass. It is, however, a power jam now for Dublin. It's a back block on Naylor Swift. Um, another power jam for Dublin. And all the blockers for both teams out and about now into going into turn number two. Looks like we're gonna have a little bit of a direction and gameplay call, and that is gonna be assessed to a Dublin blocker. Sacramento now fully focused on defense trying to keep dashing through snow from picking up too many points and Dublin sending another blocker to the penalty box um, they are wild and out there trying to get that offense happening yeah the, the more blockers they lose the, the harder it is for them to try to puncture holes into that line of Sacramento that, Trudy <laughs> that right, said uh, they, <laughs> Trudy did get out yeah, it, but like how much time was, uh, was drained off that clock because it brought Swift right back out, who's now gotten through the pack and picking up four back for Sacramento. Yeah, Swift just wrapped her body around that blocker and she didn't quite stay in play, but the blocker went out as well. So Swift free to go and a very easy scoring pass. Another four points for Sacramento. The defense for Sacramento really on in Ooh. this jam. Uh, rotating doors for Dublin's blockers. We've had up to about almost three in the box at one time, and as soon as we got down to just uh, number one nine six, I'm sorry, one six nine, really low. I was like one nine six. That's me. <laughs> I'm not in this game. 
Pen penalties should be assessed to announcers. That'll make things interesting. <laughs> That's the last thing I need. <laughs> Four points picked up by Sacramento. Bring a 126, 111, 60 minutes and change to go. All right, that was Sacramento's biggest jam in this half. They scored 16 points to Dublin's eight. The previous uh, top jam of the half was by Shock and Auburn, who of course not in the regular jammer rotation. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so current score 126 to 111. Sacramento trailing by just 15 points. Yep, earlier Swister we saw how like was favoring like his RA back out there. So that's some good news on the behalf of Sacramento having her back out there going skate to skate, and that is against Thea, number eight zero zero of Dublin. Thea trapped behind Con Artis and Crystal right now uh, at the pivot line, but number 575 Pippa coming in for the offense. Narnar -nar Jinx uh, knocking Thea out. Oh my goodness, yeah. the aerial twister back yeah, in the it was a, box. It was a, yeah, I saw a forearm getting called and I seen illegal contact, but Con, yeah, Con Artis come back also with a, a high penalty uh, ratio coming into the second half here, not looking good for Sacramento. Thea taking advantage of this power jam now, working that scoring pass, trying to find that opening and a quick sweep around and gonna pick up the full four around Crystal. You see Sacramento in the front of the pack. Dublin in position, uh, lined up on that inside. They force their way through the wall and Thea out of the pack. She got three points and a no pass, no penalty on the fourth. Ariola Twister back on the track, uh, doing that initial pass. So now she's in a position to score points. Thea working on another scoring pass, but feeling the pressure calls off the jam. That's another three points for Dublin. Looks like a 13 nothing jam for Dublin. Uh, not the biggest jam in the half, but possibly the biggest differential of the half. Absolutely, and a shout out to action number one, seven, Rhodes Warrior. And great blocking at the end there, forcing the into the infield. I also want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors. Um, because why be flat when you can sparkle? Refreshingly natural polar seltzers, no calories, no sodium, no sugar, no sweeteners, and no gluten. Hashtag Polar Derby. And from Polar Derby to Roller Derby, Green Oak Cooney in <laughs> getting the lead jam for Dublin. And a make or break by Namaste finds a wide opening around that pack. So she took the star off to create a distraction, but star back on, now ready to score. Uh, race against time. Looks like Dublin called it off just in time to keep Namaste off the board, but it's a 0 0 jam. Again, a reflection of, you know, when you look at that score, as you mentioned before, uh, you can, uh, it never really fully tells the story of any game. And this one is almost a very evenly matched, you know, a little bit more of a lean towards Dublin. But Sacramento has taken that lead before. We have been tied twice already. And we still have so much more to go with 13 minutes and change. We got Swift out there rocking the star for Sacramento. And on behalf of Dublin is Gemerald. And I will say, uh, you know, about the score not telling the story of the game, whether or not Sacramento wins this game, it is a win because their two games yesterday, they were 100 point spreads. They lost by around 100 points. But today, they've kept it very close. Right now, we have, speaking of very close, our jammers. Naylor Swift out in front, but Gemerald, the lead jammer, getting the signal from the bench to call it off. Dublin trying to burn time, maintain that lead. And um, that's another 0-0 zero, zero jam. Uh, shout out to all our Sacramento Roller Derby friends at home. I see you all in the chat talking to each other about how great Sacramento is. So thank I you. see you. Thank you for being awake and caffeinated as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are Dublin fans in the chat too, but I don't know their names. So, hello Dublin fans, thank you for watching all the way from Dublin. And Dublin's enjoying all the snow over here. <laughs> yeah, perhaps and, not and, what they expected. And, and uh, yeah, I got like next time out comes around, I gotta tell you a funny story about Dublin NPR Megadon. <laughs> I can't handle the anticipation. Oh, uh, it, it, it was one of like the, the, the one of those great we moments are in a that you know. Out, so. Oh, actually, well, not, 
now that now that you mention it. Uh, no, it was the just the traditional time out here. All right, real, real quick. So uh, back on Friday, uh, uh, PR Magetti, one of our announcers here, uh, decided he wanted to go out to see Captain Marvel and went out with a few of the skaters from Dublin, and it was a a, a great experience for them because uh, as they were down in Somer uh, Somerville, they got to experience one of our big theaters here with Do uh, the Dolby Theater with surround sound, plush seating recliner chairs, and the sound coming out around the chairs as well. And Peak they, America. Yes, <laughs> they freaked out because they don't have this back at home. So hopefully they can bring some of that to, to back to Ireland so that way they can build theaters just as great as we have. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's truly the hallmark of civilized society. Uh, back on the track, dashing through the snow up against Bird Dog. Bird Dog, lead jammer again. I believe she was the lead jammer last time she was out. Nope, I'm telling you no. She was lead jammer once before, but not the last time. So Bird Dog now uh, on a scoring pass, dashing through the snow, stashing the star to get out of the pack. Bird Dog completing her scoring pass, calling off the jam. But I see Dublin's a bench kind of gesturing for the cutting penalty. Will he call an official review on it or just uh, be mad, I guess is the question. <laughs> Oh, uh, Violet Bob's got, uh, you know, he's, he's a great coach with great eyes. Oh, it's, he can literally, just, he scans everything going on that track at that time. But uh, after just a, a quick discussion with officials, it looked like that's not going to stand right now as Ariel Twister is going to be out there rocking the star for Sacramento. And that looks like Thea down there for Dublin. Dublin now with a 21 point lead, looking to widen it. Thea out in front as your lead jammer in position to score points and widen that lead. But Ariel Twister completing her initial pass, racing out of that pack and around the track. Thea colliding with the pack in the apex. It looks like she was able to get her hips in front for all four points. However, Ariel coming up with three points, so it's only a one point gain for Dublin in this jam. We've got 11 minutes left in the game, 140 to 118, Dublin's still in the lead. They've really held that lead for a while. We had a lot of back and forth and a few ties in the first half, but Dublin has been steadily leading for, uh, I want to say, the, this half. We haven't seen Sacramento take the lead yet. <coughs> and it looks like Bird Dog. <laughs> That's Neil. Oh, I'm sorry, Neil Swift got through, but got a track cut call there. So we're going to have a power jam now in favor of Dublin with Greenhold Cooney. And a track cut being called on Greenhold Cooney. We're going to have a do -si do go the full two here. Two entire minutes. We also have a number of blockers in the mock each pack with a blocker, but now uh, some confusion about who's getting released. Is the time done? <laughs> yeah, Con Arnest wasn't too sure. She was standing up in the box. But there was a few, a couple of the blocks from Dublin being released at the same time. Both jammers now back on the track. Naylor Swift encountering Dublin as they enter turn one. Sacramento at the pivot line, hanging on to Greenhall Cooney. But Greenhall Cooney emerging from the pack, completing that initial pass. Naylor Swift also completing her initial pass. Uh, blockers backing up into the straightaway. Uh, Greenhall Cooney hopping, <laughs> falling, but getting through for four more points. And we're already down uh, under the last 10 minutes. No timeouts called by either team in the second half. As we start to wind down the clock, the moment Greenhall Cooney taking her time, recycling back to the track behind Conquistadora. And now finds that opening. Oh, almost, yep, on the inside, but getting put into the infield, and yep, we're going to get a no pass, no penalty as uh, Thomas goes into the infield as well. That's right. Meanwhile, Naylor Swift getting another penalty, heading to that penalty box. She's had now two in this jam, which means the defense really uh, in a, having to work hard. We've got Blushy Lushy currently on Greenhog Cooney, uh, well, along with Pauls and Conquistadorable out on the track. It is, looks like an... Yep. An 11, no, a 12, 10 point jam overall yeah. for Dublin. 
and the official review being called by Sacramento. I think it is going to be in relation to uh, Connors because there's confusion and they held her back in the box. They didn't release her, uh, even though the, the Dublin blockers we saw come in ahead of her and uh, come, uh, come in after her and then still left uh, before she got released. So there was confusion and discussion we saw on the bench. So I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be discussed in this official review here. I think that is a very good guess and uh, a very good word from our sponsor coming up. Oh, it, it, this one takes no guess. This is an actual fact, and that is the world's largest uh, derby store made for derby by a derby. Who is it? None other than Bruised Boutique. You can visit them at bruisedboutique.com. Uh, they were here selling a lot of cool stuff Saturday. Uh, their main location in Nashua, New Hampshire, but they do ship worldwide. They have some amazing packages they put together, especially for a lot of the new skaters, that fresh meat package I did bring up. And we even have a lo some of the local skaters, even from my league province, Roller Derby, will send an, uh, an emissary with all their orders and all their money to go do pickups right from there. But definitely check out bruiseboutique.com for all the awesome stuff. And even I got a pair of sweet leggings from them as well. <laughs> Is it the leggings you're wearing right now? No, it was actually uh, these awesome purple tentacles. That sounds these are delightful. Green, these are green tentacles. <laughs> Looks like our teams are awaiting the, the decision from the officials. Officials are talking right now. So I would like to let you know about our sponsor, Sociopath. New England Roller Derby Report would like to thank their production sponsor, Sociopath, S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H. Sociopath is a skater-run business offering custom sewn-to-order leg wear for teams and individuals. Size inclusive active wear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armband and helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. Team discounts are available. Please see sociopath.ca for more details. Looks like our refs now are talking to our non-skating officials in the penalty box trying to figure out exactly what happened. So I think your guess about Colin Artis and the penalty confusion is probably on the money. And it's going to be interesting, too, to see how many penalties Connors had, because coming into this, uh, I believe it was about four, four penalties at the start of That's the second right. half. So it, it might be in a really It should be a penalty they, danger problem. Yeah, that could be an issue, too. I mean, then again, they, they say, don't speculate. No, we're going to speculate, because there's like, so well, many questions. That's what we're That's paid what we're to do, <laughs> to be but, experts. <laughs> but we will get that don't information you, once Rippy. it does come. That's what I'm paying to do, is what I meant to say. No, I think Rippy laughing at me, think <laughs> me being called an expert. <laughs> we can we can laugh at more than one thing at a time. I'm an expert. <laughs> All right, this well, must be a very involved question. I'm seeing a lot of discussion with our officials. Um, we have eight and a half minutes left in this game. The score sitting at 150 to 122. Um, Dublin took 10 points out last year, and Sacramento with four. So Dublin leading by 28 points right now. I'm sorry, math occurred. There was a little delay. <laughs> math, never once. <laughs> Not even once. <laughs> Not even once. Well, I can tell you, if you have been joining us on Saturday weekend, thank you very much here on Twitch TV for WFTDA TV. Uh, if you uh, haven't uh, joined us for any previous bouts, in between each, we do interviews with the selected MVPs of both teams, which we're going to have right at the end of this game, and then followed up at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully, you fixed your clocks already here in North well, America. Well, we're on Eastern Daylight Time now. Yes. Oh, yeah, officially. So we're more <laughs> even now. We're back to business here. <laughs> but we're going to have Houston versus Boston at 2 p.m., followed by Naptown versus Dublin. And then we're closing out with Houston versus Sacramento. Right. And for our viewers at home, uh, Lobster Roll is not a traditional tournament. It, just because it's the last game of the day doesn't mean it is the first place game. Uh, it's a round robin tournament. Everyone's playing everyone else. Um, I did see a question in Twitch asking, is this considered a close game? Uh, yes. yes, this is a very Absolutely. close game. Even though uh, right now Dublin's leading by 25 points, um, you can accrue f four points per lap, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it would not take long to make up that difference. And before this point, we had a tied game more than once. We had a trading lead. So this is really the furthest that the score has separated in the whole game. So I'd say, yes, this is a very close game. Yep, we've had uh, pen uh, penalty chain uh, change out back and forth. And again, like it was a very pe penalty-heavy game, uh, even for both teams. 
Uh, and it looks like uh, Sacramento is going to lose this review here. Uh, it was Swifty just still in the box, now finally getting released as we had the power start with Gemerald. That's right, and Gemerald taking advantage of the situation to become lead jammer. Naylor Swift back on the track, quickly finishing that initial pass, hopefully putting the pressure on Gemerald, who's going down in the first turn. However, now I see Gemerald getting a back block going to the penalty box. We're in for another two minute jam uh, because Gemerald was a lead and lost it. And with that, now Swift's gonna pick up three points. Pack reverse coming back into turn number one. Able to meet her, that is Maniha locking up along with number 74, Stava of Dublin. Sacramento working hard on that offense. They see Con Artis and Crystal repeatedly coming in, trying to make way for Naylor Swift. They need to use this power jam opportunity to make up as many points as they can while they have the time. But unfortunately, a cutting penalty now being assessed to Naylor Swift. These penalties are truly going to give me a heart attack. So we have Gemerald back on the track. I think she served her entire 30 second penalty uh, before Naylor Swift returned to the box. Uh, that's a four point pass for Gemerald, and she is encountering the pack in turn one, getting out almost on the outside line. Two blockers going down in her wake. Pippi Long stopping, the last blocker to beat, but Gemerald gets by for two points because of a no pass, no penalty. Now that point spread being back into that favor of Dublin as Gemerald coming through into that straightaway. Able to get forced out of bounds by number one, two, four, Crystal. All right, during that last jam, I got some information about the official review. Sacramento was looking for a dismissal of the second penalty assessed to con artist when she was trying to leave the penalty box. However, the penalty stands, so uh, Sacramento lost her review. That second penalty on con artist was her seventh, which means she's now fouled out of the game. She's had to leave the bench and take off her gear. So that's two foul outs in this game for Sacramento. So they're fighting really hard to stay close to Dublin, not let Dublin run away with the game, but it's really costing them in penalties. Absolutely, and now they're taking this moment to take a quick time out on Sacramento side. Six minutes, 30 seconds, try to regroup after those last couple of jams there, especially with a lot of the jammers recycling in and out of the penalty box. So again, as you mentioned before, they're, they're down a couple of blockers now. And right, and two uh, real mainstays of the pack. Yep. And con artist, a uh, very strong blocker and known for getting those, you know, just repeated drawbacks and pink, a uh, great utility player. Yes. And now we're coming back from our timeout here. Number 83, Dash and Trudy So, going up against 606, Ariel a Twister. And as you mentioned before, it's coming down to the point spread. And Absolutely. that's that's be Sacramento's concern. All right, the game back on Ariel Twister out in front, pushing out blockers as they get into turn one. Dashing Trudy Snow right behind her, but Dashing Trudy Snow now getting the cutting penalty, heading to the penalty box. This could be a great opportunity for Sacramento, especially because they've got Ariel Twister out as their jammer. Yep, and they also lost Dirty, dirty, uh, dirty Knees Louise to the box as well. And it looks like a penalty being assessed to their pivot. So now the penalties are going in towards Dublin's blocking. And as you mentioned, this is the opportunity for Ariel Twister to take advantage, is going to pick up those four points. That's right, Ariel Twister basically just skating lap. She got through the pack untouched. Only two blockers remaining to Dublin and Sacramento is sweeping them out of the way on each pass. Ariel Twister calling off the jam to trap uh, Dashing Trudy Snow in the penalty box. We're gonna see that power start situation again, uh, starting with a, a <laughs> well, um, sorry, uh, but Ariel Twister called off the jam and then back out to jam. So <laughs> the reward oh. for doing a good job is of course <laughs> more work, <laughs> <laughs> as we all know. Get back out there, champ, you can do this. <laughs> but, they have a, but now, yeah, we have a 20 point deficit between these teams, which we know in Derby is not that much. That is five, five minutes laps. for anything to happen. And with that Ariel Swister taking control of this gym, having this opportunity, Dublin Ariel Twister just wanted a 30 second rest. <laughs> yeah. 
But Dublin still down there, pivot as well. So as Dash and Trudy Snow is still trying to fight through that pack, she has no pivot to even attempt to pass a star to. Ariel Twister already through with another four points, getting gridlocks back down by 575 Pippa. That's right. And uh, Dash and Trudy Snow still on her initial pass. Meanwhile, it looks like Ariel Twister, I think, has completed her second or third scoring pass. Um, Ariel Twister calling off the jam after. Um, these, well, the jammer getting out of the pack by way of a star pass. So it looks like an eight point jam for Sacramento. Again, we're, like we said, 20 point spread is very little. Our score now, 159 to 147. That was eight to, an eight to zero jam in favor of Sacramento. Yep, official review being called by Dublin on that last one. But as you mentioned before, you uh, capitalizing uh, twice in a row by an aerial <laughs> twister actually playing that favor. I know she probably needs a rest after that, but it still worked. But frankly, it worked. The whole take, take, it's, it's what we call taking one for the team, and she Absolutely. did. And she t helped with her awesome blocker, took the team forward, and bringing that deficit a little bit closer together. Right, and we focus a lot on the jammer, but uh, you know her blockers really made it easy for her to get through the pack. It's a team sport, as we know, it's a team effort. So um, they were able to make sure she got through as quickly as possible to put that eight points uh, up on the board. Yeah, and their focus, what it looked like with the pack, was always try to push the the defense, which was again cycling in and out of the penalty box for Dublin, push them to the outside line, particularly the straightaways, because. Errol Twister likes to favor that inside line, Absolutely. and that's where that's where she picks up that drag, that speed when she comes around. Yeah, and she is just such a fast jammer, and I can't talk enough about it because I am a very slow player, and I'm impressed by that speed. I'm just impressed by everybody. <laughs> I impress I'm, myself. You're talking to a guy who gets ex who, who gets exhausted walking from one room to the next and stubs his toe on thin air. I mean, so. <laughs> that tires me also. <laughs> it looks like uh, we're actually in an official review right now uh, for Dublin. Um, and I'm not, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what it would be for. Uh, maybe they felt too many points were assessed to uh, Sacramento or probably trying to get a penalty on the Sacramento Jammer. Uh, we shall see how this plays out. And very interesting, before we start this jam, they're putting the star on Talls. Talls. Talls has been in as a pivot, but I don't think we've seen her jam yet in this game. But I happen to know Talls is a very good player, and if she's wearing the star, I think she's going to be just fine. So we're... And we've seen Sacramento do this a couple times today. We saw Shock and Auburn go in for a jam. We saw Pink Freud rotate in for a jam. Sacramento trying to find the perfect combination to get through. And it could also be a strategy where if the jammer is stuck and Talls passes the cap and joins the pack, you know, she's one of the strongest blockers. So yep. uh, you're not and at any disadvantage. So pretty much usually utilizing Talls by name and also by reach. Can you reach <laughs> as the height advantage she is over? relatively tall. Yeah, reach over all those helmets and get it over <laughs> to her pivot. And like I said, we're down to four minutes, 13 seconds, and there is still a huge chance Sacramento could take this. Right. It's only a 12-point lead, uh, three scoring passes separating these two teams. So I see Shock and Auburn is being field fielded as a pivot for Sacramento, so I'm curious to see if they are going for a star pass strategy. Um, oh, my goodness, another jammer penalty. Forearm sending Greenhall Cooney to the penalty box. Calls your lead jammer. Uh, Another opportunity for Sacramento here. Uh, jammer penalties make and break every single game. <laughs> Talls just hammers down Voldemort coming in. That size advantage does help. It. But <laughs> also they are losing another block into the box. That is uh, number 490, Malibu Stacy. And I will say one thing about having Talls in as a jammer. She is a very uh, conscientious and deliberate player. I don't know that I've seen Talls in the penalty box in this game. Um, and if she has nope. been, it's been infrequently. Yeah, no, 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 as you mentioned, I can't think I remember ever seeing her go to that box. Three points picked up, and we're going to have a power start for Sacramento. We're down to a nine-point deficit, getting to the three-minute mark. Ariel Twista being put on that jammer line. Huge opportunity, because not only do they have that power start, they are uh, Dublin is still down a blocker in the box here, but then again, Conquista Dorable, who's been a pivotal part of the defensive line 
for Sacramento, also in the box. Ariel Twister again favoring that inside line, taking the lead. And I have to say, now that we see Ariel Twister back out, I think the choice to put Talls out was just to uh, buy some time for Ariel to rest and come back out to score points. Uh, so, as we said, competence results in more work, and here we are, Ariel Twister scoring points. That's another four, uh, putting them five points away from tying Dublin. And there was great defense there with Rhodes Warrior teaming up with Crystal, keeping Greenhall at bay for as long as they could. Right, but she's trying to catch up the pack, moving at incredible speed. Errol Twister, great agility, <laughs> goes out of bounds around Maniha, and uh, quickly calling off, and still picking up an additional three points by shutting down that door on Greenhall Cooney. We are now to a two-point deficit stone. <laughs> what is going on? It's very exciting, and I did get an update on that last official review for Sacramento, or for Dublin. Dublin was hoping to get a back block call on the Sacramento Jammer, but um, the refs said that the Dublin player moved into the Jammer's lane, so not, they did not win the review. Jammer does not go to the penalty box. All right. After you. <laughs> I was like, after you. I'm full of except right now. And all right, Naylor Swift taking a, a lead. James says for Sacramento. We're under the two-minute mark. We're down two points. Uh, sorry, two minutes, yeah, two, two minutes. points, oh, what will happen? <laughs> the terrible twos right now, and it looks like, yep, the uh, is still moving around to the initial pass. Two of the blockers for Sacramento going to the box. Wait a minute. And now there's Swift calling it off from the ground. Dublin calling it timeout. Four Whoa. points, it's a lead change. Sacramento oh, now my. in the lead by two points. Wow. There is one minute and 18 uh, seconds left on the game clock. If you are in the chat uh, log, please go crazy for both these teams and even at this bout overall. This is where the excitement comes in here, live at the Shriner, uh, Aleppo Shriners Auditorium here in Wilmington, Massachusetts of Greater Boston. And, uh, and Stone is so excited, she just flipped her chair out of the announcer's yes, booth. I, I definitely did it out of excitement. Uh. <laughs> Rippy had a heart attack in the meantime, but I think that that's from the excitement as well it's and to, not the chair falling. It's to threaten anyone who thinks they should come up and talk to us while we're on the broadcast. <laughs> All right. Oh my um, goodness. Our shenanigans aside. Oh, I see in the chat someone heard the chair clattering. <laughs> um, you're welcome, Bone. So um, the game uh, is about to resume this team timeout. Drawing to a close, we have, of course, Ariel Twister out in the star for Sacramento up against Dublin's Jammerold. And already, yeah, two in the box for Sacramento, one for Dublin. Nice tripod being set up, and that is number 74. Whoa! Whoa! Stab up! <laughs> and, was, and coming back, that, that Ari would be my knee, huh? Ariel Twister going flying out of the pack, but it gave Jammerl time to become the lead jammer, which is exactly not what Sacramento needs right now. Um, there are almost no players on the track. What Whoa. is going on right here, and Kak? Four, four, four points picked up by Dublin, timeout being called by Dublin. Uh, you got, uh, came back now, they have a two point lead, another lead change, 50 seconds remaining. I'm seeing in the chat, someone says Sacramento's energy looks so much better today. I have to agree because uh, I think maybe they adjusted to the time zone or maybe just they've, now they have two games as a team under their belt. Uh, they are getting together a little more, getting used to each other and developing the hive mind. Um, <coughs> Dublin frantically Ooh. switching out their blockers as they see, I think, Ariel on the jam line. A lot of movement. Shock and yeah. Auburn running out to supplement the Sacramento <laughs> pack. Crystal returning to the bin. Um, <laughs> the fastest game of chess ever drill. played. <laughs> a fire drill, yes. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what's happening, but we're having another timeout. Dublin calling a timeout, so they've just <laughs> whipped, up, uh, whipped us into a frenzy for no good reason at this point. Um, All right, now, we're, yeah, we're getting back to the action almost immediately. We got Thea wearing the star for Dublin. Errol Twister for Sacramento. And this is a two-point game, 48 seconds left, left on the game clock, so this str is a strong contender for being the last jam of the game, but each team has a timeout left, so who knows? And we got direction and gameplay 
Penalty being assessed. Don't know who that is right now. But Athea is out for Dublin. And getting a track cut call. She is not the lead track cut on Dublin. Cat, so, I am freaking out. Erla Twister able to finally get through the pack. And as your lead jammer, Sacramento oh. in control of this oh, line jam. They, my goodness. They could get the points and end the jam. Uh, uh, Ariel Twister put out of bounds along with Pivot. That is Stava. Recycle back. Sacramento trying to get in there, playing offense. And we're seeing di another direction to gameplay call that is going to go on the Pivot for Sacramento. Ariel but gets Thea. four points, calls off the jam. But, but official timeout because Thea came through two and might put some, but with look at forearm calls like uh, we don't hold on unofficial hold on. score on the board but i have a feeling this game may not be over uh, i see the yeah. officials talking and thinking ariel twister uh may have gotten a forearm right there at the end of the jam in which case she's not able to call off the jam. Yes. Which means the jam ended inappropriately. Yes. Um, I think we may have uh, one more jam to straighten Pos this out. Possibly. No yeah. pressure, yeah. no pressure. All the officials are talking it's, right now. There's just three Sacramento blockers in the penalty box <laughs> along with the jammer. So uh. <laughs> we only, but you know, we only need one blocker. Oh Am I my. right? <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, that that was just amazing. I am amazing. literally gonna have a Ama stroke from this amazing. game. Amazing! You will see uh, me on the ground after <laughs> this is over. Oh my goodness! And uh, just to recap again, this is how we, I die. We've had back <laughs> That's my recap. and forth lead changes in the last five minutes of this game, like encapsulated what the entire game was about. A lot of back this and forth. The, the penalties, best game ever. yeah, penalties playing against one another. Many of the power jams happening. Uh, back and forth, rotating the blockers in and out of the penalty box, and then as we saw that, you know, getting nailed to the track out when she thought she got the lead, goes to the box. Then the great defense by Dublin. Sacramento's defense trying to switch to offense and break up and help uh, Ariel Twister. And then as the, the, she's trying to get through the pack, Thea comes back in, and as she comes through the pack. <laughs> she calls off the jam, but there's a forearm penalty. She goes to the box, and here we are. <laughs> That's just a simple soap opera explanation of the last minute of our life. <laughs> I can't do with this anymore. Oh, man. So Ooh, I see Coach Dad is. in the Twitch chat saying it's very rare for the officials to declare an un unnatural <laughs> jam end. Um, I don't really know. I what is I, th happening, I think it's because the scoreboard landed as such because of the time ran out at the very end. So that's why they're all conferring together, all the officials, trying to get everything straightened out. Right. It's such a close game that if the officials call it when it's, when it's like this, you know, you don't want to win the game because it's unfair. So they, you know, it's their job to make sure the game is played fairly and wonderfully. Um... Yeah, and, I mean, we're having conflicting <laughs> penalty calls to sort out, so it is a really important question for yeah. the officials to resolve before they can declare the game's end. Absolutely, and a big shout-out to all of our officials, both skating and NSOs. Uh, quite a number of them also came across the Atlantic from Europe to be a part of the first-ever lobster roll here at Wilmington, Massachusetts, the Aleppo Shrines Auditorium in Greater Boston. Thank you, Boston Roll Derby, for putting us together here. Oh, my goodness, and again, uh, Coming up after after this game, once we get everything figured out here, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna interview uh, the two MVPs of this, and then at 2 p.m. is going to be Houston versus Boston. Um, so it's probably what's gonna happen is we're gonna see a, de a delay of oh, a delay of the 2 p.m. game because uh, this is such a Gordian knot of penalties. Um, and then I'm seeing a question, how much time was on the jam clock? I don't know, but the fact of the matter is the period clock had expired, which means there's no more time. However, if the period clock, uh, if a team calls a timeout or if the officials call a timeout uh, before the time expires, then there can be one more jam. And I believe, uh, given the you know technical situation we're in right now, my, my guess would be 
uh, we're going to have one more jam. Uh, but it just, it really depends on how these officials uh, assess the situation and what consensus they come to. Right now, I think that's what they're doing. They are trying to get a view from everywhere on the track and build consensus about what should have happened. Um, if Ariel inappropriately called off the jam, I think the only action would be for her oh. to get that penalty. And Coach for Sacramento clapping at the end there. It looks like a two point win for Sacramento. That is officials saying the game is over with that rolling whistle. 163 for Dublin Roller Derby, 165 wow. for Sacramento Roller Derby. A two point game, Sacramento's first win of the weekend and it's got to feel good. I feel excited, that, I'm not even playing Roller Derby. That, that, this, this has come so far in my opinion, the big underdog moment of the tournament here. Absolutely. Sacramento, again, like we had that back and forth action at the beginning. And then as I mentioned before, Dublin then taking that big lead yeah, with uh, it was about 30 points ahead. And I mentioned before, we've had that story happen so many times this weekend where one team has that massive control and then there's that big comeback story in the end. And we literally We're living came, it. We came down to the to the whistle on that one. It definitely it was an absolutely amazing amazing game. This is one of the ones I'm going to go home and rewatch during the week just to see what did I miss out of all this. Yeah, because there's no way we could have discussed everything. In just a couple of minutes, we are going to go live with our MVP interviews. Each team will vote for one most valuable player from the opposing team. Um, but before we do that, I want to tell you about our sponsor, New England Roller Derby Report. We'd like to thank their production sponsor, Sociopath, S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H. Sociopath is a skater run business offering custom sewn over leg wear for teams and individuals. Size includes activewear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armbands and helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. Team discounts are available. Please see sociopath.ca for more details. So, uh, what a game we've just witnessed, CAC. Oh, I'm trying to reset it's, my heart yeah, back in my chest. Trying to uh, slow that breathing down. Um, CAC and I will be on screen for you in just a moment with our... MVP interviews. But for now, I am Rosetta Stone. I am the CAC, along with our awesome producer, Rippy Longstocking. So don't go away. Join us in just a minute for MVP interviews. Hello, and welcome to our post-game interview here at Lobster Roll 2019. We've just finished a very exciting game between Dublin and Sacramento Roller Derby. I'm here with Sacramento Roller Derby MVP, Ariel Twister. Uh, hi, Ariel. And uh, this is your first win of the weekend. Uh, tell me how it feels. It feels really amazing. Our team has worked so hard to just tr try and mesh because we got like half of a new team this last season. So we've just been working so hard together to figure out what works. Absolutely. There was a huge amount of roster turnover in the charter. The other question I want to ask you, you know, watching the game, you're in as a jammer almost every other jam. So, you know, how does that feel? Is that really challenging for you? I would actually prefer to jam more because when there's a bigger jammer rotation, you get cold, so your lungs get warmer if you're skating a little bit more often. So to me, it's helpful jamming more. There you have it, secrets from the pros. So Ariel, I'm gonna give you this beautiful award from our host here in Boston. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back in just a minute with our MVP interview from Dublin. And I am the CAC back here with our MVP of Durban, Greenhold Cooney. Thank you very much for joining me. No and, <laughs> and that was a, 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 a intense bout even for me to call. There was a lot of memorable moments. I can't sum it up. But is there a particular moment in this game that you just played that really stood out to you? God, uh, no particular moment. Just great O from my blockers. That's always the best thing you can get. And some nice little jumps, my favorite thing. <laughs> and you did get some high jumps as well. And uh, with your team, uh, you have great defense. They can switch to offense. Uh, the way you guys come together, you're pretty fast. Uh, what's like what's some of the great strengths about your team, especially in this bout that uh, came to your benefit? Okay, well, I think, I think our form is something we're always working on low together, you know, ready yeah that's kind of our our whole thing and i think that we we definitely did that today yeah. absolutely and now you have one more final game coming up against naptown what's going to be that focus focus is going to be going hard going strong ready win <laughs> and finally i need to know 
your experience with snow, what do you think? <laughs> snow is good. Yeah, yeah. We don't really get snow at home, enjoying the snow. A bit wild driving in it, but we uh, yeah, we made it. So, hey, hey, snow. <laughs> yeah, and, and if I don't talk to you later, hopefully Steve travels back. We'll box up some of that snow and send it home with you. Good. <laughs> and thank you once again, Green Oakley. And thank you, Dublin, for coming on down to Lobster Roll 2019.